Hi, I'm Reed Holson. Welcome to Ask the Mayor, and a historic Ask the Mayor because this is the final program we're going to do with Mayor Mike Huther. As Dr. Seuss said, how did it get so late, so fast? Yeah. Eight years have gone by. We've done over 90 of these shows. Oh my gosh. And here we are in the mayor's office with our, with our final show. As we tape this, it's, it's uh, less than a week away from the election where new city councilors and new mayor is going to be elected. Yeah. Uh, are you surprised about uh, Dr. Seuss's quote and how fast time went? What, what happens as you get older in life is that you do realize that time goes by faster and faster and faster. Uh, but, oh boy, um, these eight years have, have gone by in just a, a blur and in a flash. Um, but, you know, every single day that I've been honored to serve is, is truly provided some, some memories, some lessons learned along the way. Um, but just so many blessings. Uh, but boy, Reed, yeah, it, it's gone by just um, so so darn fast. And this this office in this building has so much history. As we look around, uh, you can hear the echoes in the walls of the discussions and the dreams that have come since the 1930s when this building was built. Take us back to 2010 in sure. May, and when you walked in here for the first time, what did you feel? It, you know, it was a dream come true. Um, I, having the ability to walk into the mayor's office in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and, and this is a really grand office with um, just, I mean, so many things have, have happened here that have uh, ultimately, you know, improved or enhanced uh, this, this great city. Um, it was wonderful then, uh, but, you know, it was wonderful today when, when I walked in, Reed, um, uh, knowing that I had another day, another day to serve, um, you know, so much of the the decision making that that we've done over the last eight years uh, happened in really one of, of two places. Uh, one was this office right around this this coffee table, uh, and then right right next door uh, is is a conference room, and you know it, it was always people. Um, trying to collaborate and, and trying to, to figure out how we could, you know, get more and more things done in, in government. Um, often include uh, one, two, or three members of, of the city council. Uh, often included, you know, one, two, three, four members of uh, my, my city directors. And, and yes, um, many times included one or two people even from the, the city. Uh, as a whole, business leaders, uh, community leaders that wanted to make a difference here too. And, and so, you know, I think that there's an impression among some uh, that the mayor, even in a straw mayor form of government, uh, that the mayor, you know, is doing everything uh, or is controlling everything or deciding on everything and, and nothing can be further from the truth. It truly is a, a team effort, a collaborative effort. And I think that's why uh, what we're doing so well in, in Sioux Falls, not only just with, with Mayor Mike, but, uh, you know, um, Mayor Dave and Mayor Gary and, and Mayor Rick uh, and, and the next mayor uh, as well. You talked about when you were a kid in school dreaming of, yeah. of public service and, and serving in office. Uh, is it everything you thought it was going to be when you come in here? Because a lot of us think about running for office and then the realities hit you when you get in here. You know, I, I, I struggle as a kid. I, I did. When my mom and dad were divorced, uh, uh, when I was in the fifth grade, you know, I was really struggling, trying to find myself, sometimes even questioning, you know, why me, why my family, um, you know, all, all that stuff. But yeah, when I won that, uh, that speech contest uh, back in uh, the sixth grade, that, that modern Woodman of America speech contest, uh, it really did change um, my, my life. It changed my perspective. Uh, I got involved in uh, school government way back then in, in Yankton, um, and then of course South Dakota State, and, and yeah, you kind of build these expectations that yeah, I want to lead, I want to I wanna serve, I want to make a difference, and, and you think you know what it's going to entail, but until you're actually in the office, uh, you really don't know just how how, um, boy, number one, it, it's important, 
uh, because you do, you know, everything that you do that day, it, it, it has a potential impact on, on not only the people living there, but the people working there, the people playing there. Um, things come out of the blue that you never expected. Um, um, uh, uh, an ice storm, uh, um, uh, sewage collapse, uh, uh, this or that. Um, but one thing that I'll always remember is that, oh, this was a dream come true. Everything that I hoped it, was, it would be, it's been more than that, tenfold, hundredfold. Uh, and I would encourage anybody to, to, to really consider doing it. Oh boy, there are sacrifices. You get a tough skin. Uh, you know, I had one coming in, but oh, it's really crusty now. Um, there are certainly these uh, these times that you wish it wasn't like that. This, you know, some of the, but it's all worth it. It's all worth it. This public service gig uh, has exceeded my expectations and. And uh, I'm not trying to be political here. I'm just trying to give you a little insight. I really hope and pray I, I get the opportunity to do it again in, in some fashion. Uh, but never, never sure if that's gonna happen. So I'm gonna relish the eight years uh, that I got to serve uh, the citizens of Sioux Falls. Relish it like you can't imagine. Politics are different than real life, aren't they? Are they not? I mean, the transactions yeah. and the relationships are, are quite different. Is it, is it really frustrating? Has it been frustrating? I, I think one of the real first tough lessons that you learn, uh, and I'm sure the mayoral candidates, the city council candidates, the gubernatorial candidates, what it would be, they're learning this as well. One of the very first things that you learn, and it's tough, is uh, you learn who your true friends are. Um, and you know, government shouldn't be about making friends. It, it shouldn't be. In fact, that's probably one of the, uh, the worst things that you can do is get into government hoping that you're going to create a bunch of friends. Because uh, then I think you, you, you're not leading at the level that you should. But even when you're running for mayor or running for governor, you do learn who, who your true friends are. Uh, people are going to pick sides. Uh, and that can really, really be a, a wake-up call um, for, for you. And, uh, but, but in the end, uh, I think that you, you still realize that, you know, maybe even though they're not your best friend, you can still be collegial with them, uh, professional with them, and you'll find that you can work with them to make things better. Uh, you know, I wasn't planning on talking about this, Reed, but, you know, I'm going to give you an example, and, and I, hope that, I hope that he doesn't mind. Terry, I'm, I'm sorry if... Uh, if I'm overstepping my bounds here, but you know, one of the very first things I did when, when I was even nearing the end of my first campaign uh, and then uh, was blessed by the honor to serve is, you know, the event center debate. Uh, that was a really, boy, that was a tenuous uh, debate during the, my first mayoral campaign and then certainly during the campaign uh, on whether we would uh, build a new event center or not for our city. My next door neighbor, who was not only someone I grew to like, but it was someone that I grew to love, uh, Terry Balloon uh, and his beautiful bride, Cheryl, they're our next door neighbor. And, uh, you know, he had been involved in, um, <laughs> he had been involved in the event center debate long before me. Uh, trying to ultimately make that happen for our great city. And, and uh, near the end of uh, my, my first campaign, I kind of had a differing view um, on 
how we would ultimately get that done. And, oh, you know, here's, here's this man that was been a big brother for me. And uh, we did not see eye to eye on that. And, oh, it strained our friendship uh, at, in, in a just an incredible way. Hmm. And, uh, you know, ultimately um, I was elected and uh, started to tackle that uh, issue on behalf of the, of the citizens. And for a while, Terry and I were still really struggling. And then, you know, uh, thank goodness, uh, thanks to Cheryl, his bride, Cindy, my bride, and, and the ability of, of Terry and Mike uh, to kind of overcome those differences and realize that um, Friendships are ultimately uh, worth salvaging. Um, hmm. that, was, uh, that was a really special moment. And, and it's just something that you learn in government. Uh, that huh, you are going to disagree sometimes in incredible levels on, on these topics. And... You're, you're not trying to hurt anybody. You're just trying to do what you ultimately believe is the right thing for your community as a whole. Uh, realizing that every decision that you make, you're really going to make some people mad. Because um, you're, you're not going to agree with them entirely. And in fact, you may in fact have to tell them no. Or at a minimum, not not yet, uh, or not give them everything that they wanted. So, boy, you know, Reed, I, I wasn't planning on going there, but I think that that's a great uh, question, uh, and maybe it'll prove uh, important or valuable for the people watching this program. Um, you know, maybe maybe before they judge that governor or president or mayor or counselor about a decision they make. Maybe they just take a deep breath and go, you know, oh, okay, uh, it's a tough gig, um, but hopefully uh, and sincerely they were doing it based on the city, state, or country as a whole. Uh, that, that's what I've tried to do. But, oh, uh, is, it, is it hard uh, to, to, to do that? Sure, it can be lonely doing this job. Is it important for you to be understood? what your motives are and what you want to do and what you have done. I, uh, I went running, I'm training for uh, the Ann Arbor, uh, Michigan uh, half marathon. I'm going to run it on May 20th. And uh, I was running uh, on the Sioux Falls bike trail uh, about seven and a half miles. And there were only three people on that bike trail the entire run. And as I was running, I was thinking about, <clears throat> I'm alone out here. And uh, yeah, Reed, there are so many times where I felt I was alone. Uh, you know, the, the weight of uh, Sioux Falls was, was on that, that shoulder and you're going, Hi, is anybody else out there uh, with me? Um, and there are certainly times where you're going, you know, why don't they understand? Um, but it's hard because you've got um, 182,300 people right now living in Sioux Falls, and they all have their own lives that they're leading. They're, they're trying to, you know, keep a roof over their head, um, uh, pay for their health insurance, um, uh, care for their grandma who's, who's in the nursing home. All these things that, that Reed, you and I are, are, are doing. Uh, so they have their own lives to lead. And, and so ultimately, you're, you're trying to get the, the word out there, you know, why you are making these decisions that you're making, why you think it's a good investment for the people that you serve, uh, why you have voted yes versus no, you know, etc. But it is hard. Uh, because uh, people are busy, um, the media, they try, but 
you know, they've got limited space in their newspaper or little, limited time on the six or 10 o'clock news. And, and so that's why I think it's so important for folks to understand that um, these elections are so important. They're, they're so critical because you are electing people that you want to make these tough decisions and you're trusting them to do it on your behalf. And so, yeah, even though that message wasn't always out there um, as clearly as I wish it would have, what I've really respected is that um, these women and men that live in Sioux Falls, they've entrusted me to, to make good decisions. And uh, it's been very rare, if ever, uh, that after the vote was made, I've had people come back to me and uh, really kind of uh, chew my tail. It's been very rare. Um, and in fact, it's probably one of the best um, things going for Sioux Falls uh, is that we, sir, we are going to debate, we are going to disagree, but ultimately we, we do compromise, we do collaborate, and we get things done, and then we address that issue or we uh, capture that opportunity, and then guess what? The next day, we go do it again. Uh, and, and that's what's really been special. And I think that's why we've had just a successful uh, eight-year run. Uh, we've moved on and uh, tackled the next big thing. As you mentioned in your state of the city, and it's an incredible statistic, but we've grown by 30,000 people since you started in 2010. That's, that's really astounding. As you said, like adding Aberdeen to the city of Sioux Falls. Is the city a different place than it was in 2010 versus 2018? And how is the next mayor going to have to face these challenges? Uh, very much so, uh, Reed. And, and when I was running for mayor in 2009, 2010, it was certainly a different city then. I mean, economically, we were, we were challenged. Um, there were a bunch of things that we wanted to tackle uh, uh, as, as a city but weren't able to accomplish it. I don't think our confidence was uh, was very strong back then. Um, you know, we were still growing, uh, but but certainly not at the level that we are now. Unemployment rates were were some of the highest they've been in our city, and and, and stuff like that. Uh, our downtown, I do want to mention, our downtown, uh, it wasn't dead, uh, but it was struggling, and so yeah, it has changed dramatically in in eight years. Uh, yeah, as you said, we've we've added the uh, population, the, uh, the city of a size of an Aberdeen. And we did that in only eight years. Um, uh, five straight years of record-breaking construction, one of the lowest unemployment rates in America, almost 500 miles of, of road repair, financially, you know, really, really strong. Uh, uh, in fact, you know, even though we've, we've uh, borrowed some money to, to capture some of these quality of life investments, our, our debt per capita is actually lower now than when I started in 2010. And, and then, yes, things that uh, <laughs> I'm sure will be part of the Huther legacy, you know, the, certainly the events center. Um, we had an old Sioux Falls arena. Uh, that was our entertainment show place uh, back in 2010. And, and uh, you know, it was a workhorse certainly serving us, but but uh, there weren't many concerts or shows or pheasant fests coming to Sioux Falls at that time. Um, an indoor swimming pool uh, that the public can use regardless of their age or, or income. Uh, a downtown that's so vibrant. Uh, you know, all these uh, amenities that really enhance our quality of life. The Sanford Sports Complex. Uh, um, almost every mile of bike trail has been completely refurbished. And now, yeah, people on the west side can get to it too. Uh, 80 plus parks that have all been redone and, and on and on and on. Um, um, yeah, we've changed. Um, uh, I hope this is not hokey. You know, I, I talked about this in my State of the City address, but you know, my stepfather Earl is now passed. He just passed away last year. You know, he, he, he told me, hey, Mike, you know, I, I, I would encourage you to leave things better in the way that you found them. And, he was kind of scolding me at the time, back when I was a younger whippersnapper. But that, that was, a, it was a great message that, uh, that I've tried to really adhere to, even as the mayor. And, and I don't want to denigrate uh, prior mayors. Or anything, but, but again, their goal was to leave it better than they found it, and they did. My goal was to do the same. And I'm sure that the next mayor 
the next council, the next batch of hungry citizens that want to make this city better, they'll, they'll do the same thing. Well, eight years does this, but we're going to have to ask you questions to, to name your, some of your greatest okay. and moments and situations in your mayor before okay. we take a, take a break here. Okay. So let's talk about, let's talk about, a challenge. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> let's talk about a challenging one first. What's your greatest disappointment in these eight years as mayor? I, I don't like to dwell uh, on um, the disappointments, but it is a flaw in my personality. I do. I do. Uh, and, and I don't know why God made me this way, uh, but it is what it is. And, you know, one of the things that I, I, I will say, and I've said this before, um, I, you know, I, I do want to be, we kind of talked about this earlier in the program, Reed, as a, you do want to be liked. You do. And, and you want to, shoot, you want to be loved if you can. But the reality is you learn that, that in this public service role, that's not going to always happen at the way that you think. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll remember something, and, and um, I haven't shared this with a lot of people. But, you know, those first four years that I had the honor and the blessing to serve, uh, I think it may, uh, it, it certainly was four incredibly productive years. Uh, we tackled everything from uh, sanitary sewer line collapse and an ice storm, uh, these incredible rain flooding events. Um, we got our event center uh, done. We actually, pension reform, uh, repairing parks, rebuilding confidence. Our downtown was going gangbusters and on and on and on. We were really, I think, doing things really, really well. Um, but the reality is, is that, um, and it's hard, uh, but even with that, uh, in the election that, that came, um, and, and the experts will say, well, Huther, you won that in a landslide. And that's what they said to me. It was, it was a landslide, landslide statistically. Uh, well, not, not in my mind. You know, there were still four out of every ten people that I worked my tail off to serve that would have loved to kick Mike out of that office and get somebody else in there. And that's... Uh, that's just something, I think it's a good reality check for, for everybody. Uh, so, you know, that was certainly uh, uh, challenging. Um, you know, one of the things that um, uh, I, I, I've been proud of, not a lot of disappointments because uh, as, as I've looked back and I've looked back with the help of my team, I've looked back with the help of other counselors that I've had the, the honor to serve with over the last eight years, we tried to figure out what were the things that we went after over the last eight years that we did not accomplish? And uh, uh, we couldn't think of any. Um, uh, public transportation is one that, uh, you know, I, I, we made progress, but that was one where I, I didn't feel we made the pro enough progress. Uh, you know, so. So I don't know. I, we've been, it's been a really great eight years. We've put a lot of points on the scoreboard, um, but we're certainly uh, capable of, of doing even more. Well, you talk, you talk about tallying wins, which you've talked about over the eight years. Yeah. What's the, we want to know the one single exhilarating moment that, that you had the most joy of accomplishment in your, in your mayorship. Can you name one? You know, I... Mm. I, I think I, I, it's a struggle naming one. I, I, I want, not that I want a legacy, but I, I, if I can get people to remember me, I would like them maybe to remember me as, uh, like, boy, that, that guy got stuff done. He got stuff done. And, and I think that there's a, uh, a real feeling in, in America and South Dakota and um, I, I hope not in Sioux Falls anymore, you know, that, that government can't get anything done. Uh, and I think that's ultimately what people want. They just want to get stuff done. Uh, 
in, in government, and we did that. We did that. Uh, uh, these eight years, we proved that you can get things done in government, and that's why I've, I've told people, I believe we've got the most productive city government in America right now. Uh, I, I do. So, you know, when I hear people about, boy, uh, you got to work more collaboratively uh, in, and things like that, I'm going, my gosh, you can't get things done in government unless you're working collaboratively. And uh, thank goodness for the city council because they certainly are, are a huge part of that collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it was three votes, sometimes it was four votes, sometimes it was five votes, sometimes it was eight votes, but we got enough votes to, to get things done. And, um, you know, um, the, you're kind of forcing me into a box read. Uh, so, you know, maybe that, that ice storm, that was, that was memorable. And I was so proud of our team. And it was more than the city employees. As a mayor, uh, you, you want the town to rally. That's your ultimate goal. Uh, get, get everyone rallying behind the effort. And if there was one thing where we rallied as a team, let's go, let's kick tail on this thing, it was the ice storm. It was the ice storm. I'll never forget how the uh, people from the, the federal government came in, you know, FEMA. I'll never forget, they came in and they're meeting with us and their first reaction was, how did you, your city, how did you do all this stuff? It, it looks, you've done things that other cities couldn't comprehend with such a dramatic, you know, weather-related emergency. And I think that was a testament to the people of Sioux Falls. Because we did it, it's what we do. We're South Dakotans, are you kidding me? Yeah, barn burns down, we built, we, we'll have that new barn built within a week. Uh, uh, barns didn't burn down here, but we had so much damage, so many people without power, people that were concerned about this or concerned about that. We rallied in, in, a, in a day, in a week, and we transformed our city and we got back to, the, to being Sioux Falls again. We weren't going to let any dang ice storm slow us down. So you boxed me in, Reed. Uh, I'm going to say that ice storm. And the five-year anniversary, in fact, is, uh, is coming around just like that. It really is. You yeah. make a point um, is before we take a break here in that ice storm and everybody reacting in that sense of family in Sioux Falls and in South Dakota and this region. Uh, you look around your office, you've got family and pictures all over the place. So, so I mean, your family's present here in your work. Yeah. What's the impact, before we take a break, on the family of being a public servant and being someone so visible as, as the mayor of Sioux Falls? Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> this was Mike's dream. Um, it wasn't Cindy's dream. It wasn't Kylie's dream. Um, it wasn't my mom's dream. Um, it wasn't my family's dream. And it was Mike Huther's dream. But I, th I think the, what makes family so wonderful and so important and should be the focus in our life uh, is that, you know, when, when you need them, or when I needed them, they've always been there for me. And that's why, yeah, in this office, there are so many pictures of my family, uh, Cindy, Kylie, George, uh, David, my mom, you know, others in my family, that as we were in it together and we had these snap, snapshots in time, um, I wanted them to realize uh, they're, they're always with me. They were part of it. And in fact, uh, the reality is, they were the main factor uh, in 
uh, me serving as, as mayor. My, my number one uh, uh, advisor, no doubt, uh, was Cindy Sue Lecker, uh, who, who 32 years ago became Cindy Sue Huther. Uh, the First Lady is easily my, 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 my advisor. Uh, she's lifted me up uh, when I needed it to coach me um, and is stuck in there with me through and through and through. And a and, uh, little insight, because you can tell I'm getting a little emotional here. Maybe it's a good time for a break. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, I'll give you also a little insight, uh, Sioux Falls. Um, um, about two weeks ago, um, I was talking with Kylie, uh, who all of a sudden turned 29 and got married and had a baby named George. But um, uh, Kylie, uh, you know, she gives me good advice now, uh, and I, I'm, I value it. And, and I said, you know, honey, I go, um, you know, what, 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 if, if you had some wishes for me as I, as I get done with my term as the mayor uh, on May 16th, I go, I go, what advice do you have or, or what wish do you have? Mm. Oh, and it, it was so clear and so real. She goes, she goes, Dad, she goes, Dad, I'd just like you to be Mike Huther again. Mike, my dad, again. And she goes, I hope <clears throat> you can be fun <clears throat> again. And I looked at her and I go, geez, honey, I, in my mind, I, I thought I've still been fun. Um, but that was my perception. You know, your, your family, they see what happens. They see how tough you got to get, how cold you got to get sometimes in, in, your, in your heart. Uh, and yeah, you probably become less fun because you're so focused on uh, tackling uh, some of these challenges that, that face your, the community that uh, you're so blessed to serve. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate that. So we're going to take a break. Is that okay? Uh, please do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks to Mayor Mike Huther in this office, obviously in this building, very historic when we come back. We'll take a tour of this office and what means the most to Mayor Mike Huther in his term here is eight years of Sioux Falls mayor and uh, what it means to the next mayor as well too when we come back and ask the mayor. The Midco Aquatic Center is hiring part-time lifeguard positions, work while going to school, flexible schedules, and bonus opportunities available. No certification needed to apply. Find out more information at midcoaquaticcenter.org slash employment. Welcome back to Ask the Mayor. You know, each mayor in the city of Sioux Falls has been in this office, has a chance to personalize it and make it their own, and Mayor Huther is no different. So let's take a look around the mayor's office and see what makes this a personal workspace for him for the last eight years. So there's lots of mementos and pictures. Yeah. You're fond of pictures. Point us out some, some interesting things that really mean a lot Thank to you. Thank you. Well, Reed, I, I'm a memory guy. I just am. I, you try to maximize these memories as much as you can, and, and if you can capture them uh, on, on film or in so that that's always a big deal and so yeah I've got uh, a variety of things here uh, you know some of them that maybe I could one of, one of the most fun moments uh, and it was about four mo four minutes that I had uh, was when we had the the very first toast at our new uh, Denny Sanford Premier Center we had Florida Georgia line and Jason Aldean playing for a packed house. There was so much enthusiasm for everyone who was there, and they had captured, uh, you know, me uh, giving a, the toast right before uh, th that those groups came out on, on stage. And yes, Sioux Falls, I did have a, a beer, and it was half it was half empty or half full. And uh, but that was just such a, a great time. And Chris Semrau actually captured that yeah. that picture, you know, for me. Um, other, other things, and again, I don't want to make it all about the events center, but yeah, uh, pictures of the, the four city councilors who, who voted yes uh, on, on such an important vote. Um, and I look back at that and I'm going, boy, you know, we, we'd still be in the Sioux Falls arena uh, if not for, you know, these four uh, men who, 
who voted yes on that, on that critical project. And that's, that's again, it, it is a collaborative effort. Uh, the mayor probably gets way too much credit at times and maybe takes way too much blame at times, but ultimately it is, it is a collaborative effort. Um, you know, we talk about the impact of family. I've got pictures of my, my mom and uh, my mom, you know, and my wife, Cindy, and certainly my daughter, Kylie, I've got these, these strong women uh, German Russian women that uh, are my greatest influence and and my mom certainly uh, has been that and and more and and I already told you about uh, my my dad you know up above I love that picture <laughs> that, <laughs> pigs are flying <laughs> yep there you go uh, read <laughs> that and that was that was interesting um, the rail yard redevelopment project and I and I I've told people this, and I'm, I, I persevere usually in, in everything I, I tackle, and, and I, I don't give up. But I've told you that. I, I almost gave up on the rail yard redevelopment project, uh, you know, inking that deal with Burlington Northern. Uh, you know, back in 2005, Senator Johnson, Senator Thune, uh, uh, Representative Her uh, uh, Herseth at, at the time, they were able to secure all these dollars, but yet we couldn't ink the deal. And uh, so here we were going, are we ever gonna get that done? And there, there was a thought out there that, yeah, yeah, you'll get that deal done when, when pigs fly. Uh, that, that was kind of the feeling. Well, then all of a sudden, <laughs> we have our, our uh, these, these beautiful sculptures that come in every year. All of a sudden, there's one with a pig flying on a helicopter and then they just happened to put that right there uh, in the location where um, uh, that, those 10 valuable acres of land are. And so it was wonderful. Uh, Paul Schiller took that picture and, and, uh, and I put it up and now it's sitting here. And it always reminds me, yeah, you can get things done even when people say eh, it's only gonna happen when pigs fly. Guess what? Pigs have been flying in Sioux Falls, South Dakota for eight years. Um, uh, every time we said fly, little pig, they're they're doing it and, and more and that. But that was one monster one uh, there. Um, you know, read um, the folks can't see it, but but um, over there's a picture right across the street from City Hall is the direct the direct line prayer center. There are these wonderful people that pray for me, the city council in our city every single day at the prayer center right across the street. Well, there's a picture of uh, these wonderful uh, women over there that pray for me, and um, they were surrounding me, and I said, you're not gonna make me cry, and someone took a picture right when that happened, and so I now it's the only thing on that uh, window seal that, that ultimately um, um, rem, you know, reminds me of that, of that moment, but also the importance of you know, your faith in this journey, and, and yeah, people praying for you, lifting you up, and, and cheering you on. Um, you know, while we're here, well, I might as well. Hey, sure. If you don't mind. Do I have to uh, move? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Right behind um, uh, Reed Sioux Falls, and I don't know if people know this, but it's one of the best things about the mayor's office. Um, <laughs> we've got your own bathroom. It's in there. It's in there. Yeah. It's an old one. It's old, <laughs> but it works. And it's one of, when, when uh, you'll have... Um, um, young and old coming into the mayor's office and, and uh, especially these young people, I'll tell them, hey, I've got, a, I've got my own bathroom. They're fascinated by it and, and more. So yeah, just one of the fun things. And, and also uh, Sioux Falls, um, I, I think that people were under the misimpression that the mayor's office was gonna move to the new you know, city administration building. Um, I, I certainly hope that never happens. And I don't know why anybody would want it to. Uh, first of all, when you are the mayor, uh, you are so honored and blessed to come into this, this grand old space. You know, it's been around here since, what, the 1930s? Mm -hmm. And I don't know why you wouldn't want this to be, you know, your, your home where you do business. And, and uh, uh, we, we had our own little personal touches. We'll go through it a lot. But Cindy and I, we, when we travel, we like to go to presidential libraries. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know it sounds probably a little, little weird. But we do, we like to go to presidential libraries. We don't care who the president is, but it always fascinates me uh, when you go to them because all these leaders, you can't imagine 
the magnitude of the challenges uh, that that they that they over that they, they they took on, but also they always have a replica of the president's office, and so we've tried to you know incorporate some of those things here: the, the reds, the blues, the golds, the flags. Yes, the pictures and and stuff like that. So yeah, um, uh, should we continue our tour? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Thank let's you. Go. Thank you. We moved over to the opposite corner of the mayor's office here, where there's other mementos over here, Mayor <laughs> Huther from. Lots of lots of times in the event center, and you've right. had other mementos. Tell us tell us about some special things here. Well, all right, I'll, I'll touch on a couple. Um, you know, the very first uh, basketball game at the at the Denny Sanford Premier Center that was that was a big deal. O'Gorman girls versus Roosevelt girls, and you and I got to uh, you know do the tip the the tip off. That was a lot of fun. Just to, you know, another dream come true, uh, and I was so blessed. Um, I actually got to be the commencement speaker at my alma mater, South Dakota State University. And uh, that was a packed house at, um, you know, Frost Arena. And, and um, I got emotional at the end when I, I said, hey, it was one of the things on my magic list. Um, and I thanked all the graduates for letting me, um, you know, accomplish that with, with their help and their support. So yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, you know, even things like, um, folks, I don't remember, we, we, we finally got uh, a Division I uh, a basketball tournament here in, in a very, very grand scale. And, and I remember we had uh, folks like here from South Carolina and, and Syracuse and, and on and on and on. Well, I got to meet Coach Q, Coach Quentin, who was the, the head coach of um, Syracuse University. And I don't know if you remember, but the Orange, Syracuse, those women, they won the tournament unexpectedly. And and uh, Cindy and I became good friends with Coach Q. And in fact, he sends me texts. This is no kidding. I should show them to you. <laughs> he sends me texts today uh, about the good things that are going on in, in Sioux Falls. Uh, and he was so thrilled, again, by the performances of, uh, this time it was the Jack Rowe women, uh, women and Men in, in the, the latest tourney. Mm -hmm. um, um, the, I'm, I'm, I'm the mayor of PBR. Who? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> are you kidding me? Yep. The mayor of PBRville. Again, I think that it was thanks to all these the overwhelming support for the things that we do that that, that ultimately made that happen. Mm. Um, okay, and <laughs> <laughs> this the, 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 so much fun. One of the one of the lessons that you learn is that even at those times when you think that you're the head cheerleader for this city, and I've tried to be the head cheerleader, um, I'm not alone in, the, in that cheerleading efforts, and. Um, I'll try to make this story brief, but um, Donald, I hope you don't mind, but this is Donald Shea. And um, Cindy and I, we went home and we're watching the 5.30 news. I'm not gonna tell you which station. But we're, we've got a monster uh, snowstorm that's happening. And this national news uh, organization, they came into Sioux Falls to cover this monster Midwestern storm. Uh, and, and we're watching it, and, and, and all of a sudden, they're interviewing this gentleman. Um, bigger gentleman, he's got a big red beard, and he just happens to be a postal carrier uh, serving the people of Sioux Falls, especially downtown. His name is Donald. And uh, never forget it. The interviewer is interviewing uh, this, this gentleman, and he said something like this. He goes, and the, the snow is going into his beard and his hair, and, and you could just sense, oh my gosh, this is, this is a big time storm. And the gentleman from CBS, well-known uh, person, goes, well, uh, sir, uh, he goes, uh, you know, how are you doing? You're a postal carrier. And, and he goes, boy, he goes, I, I bet you, you wish that you were you know, somewhere other than Sioux Falls. And, and uh, he, goes, he goes, well, he goes, um, I'm from, originally from San Diego, California. And the, the eyes on the reporter just were like, you gotta be kidding me. And he, he looked at Donald and he goes, well, I'll bet that you wish you were back in, in San Diego, California right now, aren't you? <laughs> no. Donald looks at him, this is on national TV, and he said, no. He goes, I love Sioux Falls, South Dakota. 
There's nowhere else I'd rather be. Uh, and Cindy and I, are, I'm going, can you believe that? Um, uh, he, that was on national news. The world was watching uh, this man talk about how, how he loved Sioux Falls, South Dakota in this monster rainstorm versus what some people consider just the, the gem of weather, the gem of San Diego. No, mm -hmm. preferred Sioux Falls. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I am a cheerleader, and I've tried to, to cheer at the highest level, but I'm not alone. I've got people from all over Sioux Falls that love this city as much as I do, just like Donald, cheering us on and letting people all over the world know why no. If you want the best quality of life in America, it's right here in Sioux Falls. You don't have to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. We've got it. We've got it. And so, yeah, that, um, thanks for letting me share that, that, that story and, and more. And, and uh, you know, I'll maybe just, uh, uh, this was, I, I don't want to take credit for this. This was uh, Mark Cotter. Um, um, talk about team approach again. I have been so honored to serve with over 1,200 city employees. Y you can't imagine how hard these people have worked for us. Um, uh, well, we talked about Aberdeen. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've added a city the size of Ad Aberdeen onto Sioux Falls in only, in only eight years. But we've only added just a little over 100 employees. I can guarantee you Aberdeen, South Dakota has dramatically more than 100 employees serving that city. But yet, we found a way to, to serve at the highest level, uh, do more with less, uh, come together as a team and rally, uh, and, and these city employees have done that. Um, so I, 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 I love them to the core and I'm so proud to, to serve with them, but, but certainly you, you do work with these uh, department heads too, uh, 12 department heads, uh, also you know, others that are direct reports. Well, Mark Cotter, um, in order for us to accomplish what I think is gonna be the biggest win in Sioux Falls history, that rail yard redevelopment project, he was always at my side, him and, him and Josh Peterson, and, and Mark would always say, inch by inch, Mayor, inch by inch. And I think there's a lesson there that, you know, these wins are not gonna come easy in your life. They're not gonna come easy in city government. They're not gonna come easy in, in anything that you, that you do. And if you think they are, you're not gonna do very well. You're not gonna be very successful. Um, but in this case, when it came to the rail yard redevelopment project, you know, Mark could have easily given up on it too, and so could have Josh, so could have the city, so could have the mayor. But no, we were making progress inch by inch by inch, and ultimately, we got it done. And uh, so, yeah, Mark Cotter, thank you for, for being part of that. And, and um, uh, again, it just, again, shows uh, the capability of government getting stuff done, but it's not easy and, and um, you're gonna have to work your tail off for it. And yes, uh, the thing that I've learned probably uh, in, in a great, great deal, it is truly collaborative. Uh, and these city employees, they don't get near enough credit for what they do. Well, speaking of getting things done, let's take a look at your work area. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Reed. Yeah. And this is where all the work happens. Not often you get to see where the mayor's desk is and what's on it and where the mayor of Sioux Falls works. But you gotta, you gotta tell us, you know, tell us all why, why your desk is off in the corner. Sure. Because many times the mayor has had the desk in between yeah. the two pillars where your couch and your chairs are. So why, why in the corner? Yeah, well, again, uh, my style is I do like to get uh, other people involved in the decision making, involved in the conversation, uh, you know, hashing things out, finding that common ground. And so to me, the most important part of the office has always been uh, around that that coffee table with the with the couches with the chairs and and that was the important space and and you can't imagine the number of uh, decisions that we tried to make collaboratively right right there or yes um, in in the conference room so yeah off to the side was my workspace and and uh, Cindy can attest and Heather can attest and Julie can attest it's never been this clean yeah, I was going to ask are no. you a stacker or no. is this, is this I, normal I, I usually have stuff all over the place and and also one thing too. And I know for the purposes of, the, of this program um, and, you know, because of the, of the lighting situation, these blinds, I can't remember them really being down uh, much at all, if, if at all. Um, 
I, I love the light. I love seeing what's going on out there, including uh, some people uh, having their dogs that go to the bathroom right outside right. here. It's, it's a rare piece of grass downtown <laughs> yes, right here. Yes. Uh, but yeah, the windows are, the blinds are always open and, and it's a great thing. But yeah, this has been uh, where I've tried to, to work. Uh, it's different than the other mayors, but I've really enjoyed it. And yeah, um, kind of an original desk and, and uh, there's actually some notes written in there from, from prior mayors, and I hope to do the same thing. Yeah, I was going to um, ask you that. Is that a tradition where, like the president does, yeah. where they, you leave a note well, I'm going to do that. Mayor. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to write on the desk, uh, in the desk, and then I'll, I'll leave a note as well for the next mayor. And, and I think it's a, it, it's a wonderful thing, and, and I'm, I'm excited about it. Uh, uh, you know, as, as much as I've been trying to hang on to the role, uh, as I get closer to the end, I'm, I'm really enthused about what, what happens after, you know, May 15th. Uh, the next step in, in, in this, uh, this journey. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm excited. And maybe that, you know, one thing too, uh, not to harp on this too much, but there is faith that's involved in, in this mayoral journey. At least there was for me. And, and this is a Jesus Calling book I have, and you can tell it's full of um, things in there that I think are important. And, and yeah, uh, every day, uh, in some days more than others, you need to find some way to to reinstill that confidence or that or that faith or that hope and and uh, you know just a, a daily passage in prayer uh, certainly has 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 helped. Um, you know maybe read uh, in in team let you know some of the fun things. I not only do I collect um, uh, memories or, or pictures. There are these times over the last eight years where people have said things that I just thought, thought were just, uh, just wonderful and, and helpful. Uh, some of them funny, uh, others more serious, but, but maybe just I'll touch on a couple. The very first one, the very first piece of advice I was ever given, uh, and I put it down and it's been, on, it's been right there for eight years, mm -hmm. is this. Um, offer free ice cream at a picnic <laughs> and they don't like the brands that you have. And I think it's one of the realities and, uh, is that, you know what, there's just going to be some people out there that no matter what you do for them, um, they're not going to be happy. Mm. That's just it. Yeah. Uh, it's a hard lesson learned, but it's, a, it's an important one. Um, and yeah, maybe some of the others, um, um, you know, um, and I won't mention the names, but you know, you never let the dissenters become deciders, and that's hard because sometimes that uh, that loud, vocal, passionate minority, um, they really do garner the attention of the media uh, and of the public, uh, and, and I understand that, but I think as long as you stay focused on doing things for the community as a whole. Uh, including, yes, the, the majority that are often quite silent, uh, that'll serve your city and your, and your state very, very uh, well. Um, here's one. I guarantee you that being positive in this world takes more grit than giving into cynicism any day. And, and I have tried to, you know, regardless of the hits that I've taken, uh, regardless of how much my gut has hurt and maybe my heart has been callous at times, I've always tried to be just positive. And um, yeah, I, I've wanted to punch back many times, um, but it, it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel that it was going to be productive. And so what you do learn is you learn to kind of provide the other cheek. You do. The, the spits are going to come, the hits are going to come. Uh, the jabs are going to come and basically, you know, stay positive, stay focused, stay productive, get things done. And if you focus that way and then get your team uh, to focus that way, I think that you'll, uh, you'll, you'll serve yourself well. And again, don't give in to the cynics. They're going to be out there in droves, but, but don't give in to them. Um, oh, gosh. Uh, I never argue with the fool. They bring you down to their level and then they beat you with experience. Um, um, I think enough said uh, on, on that one. Um, 
you know, this is uh, something that, that I believe in, but it, it, this was not my quote. I hate losing more than I like winning. Uh, that's, a, that's an issue that I have in, inside. I mean, I do try to strive for wins, but, it, but losing, you know, having that fear of losing, that's probably even a bigger driver for me than, than even the joy of winning. And, and that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, we've had these, the top 10 list at the end of the year. I wanted people to remember all the, the work and effort that went into these wins. And so for a while, let's just take a, a brief moment to, to, to remember them um, and more. And, and maybe just, uh, you know, one more. Um, you know, this is a good, this is a good one. Okay. And maybe it's perfect with the, um, with the mayor's election coming up. And here it is. It goes, the work a mayor does is very nonpartisan. When you talk to these guys, you really don't know if they're Democrats or Republicans. To move up to higher office, those very partisan positions, some of these guys just aren't interested in that. They're interested in solving problems. And, uh, you know, again, I could spend all day here. I've got, uh, uh, this is a picture made by uh, baby George. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, I've got pictures of George, my bride, Cindy, um, and, and so much more. But, uh, you know, I, I know we should, we should probably close this thing down, Reed. And, and first of all, I, I just wanted to, uh, let me start by, by uh, thanking, you know, I, I got Murph, and I got Brett, and I got Brad, and I got Heather, and I got Sue, and I got Tony, and I got this Reed Holson uh, boy uh, that has been so kind to do this. As you said, how many episodes? Oh, well over 90. Well over mm -hmm. 90 episodes we've done this, right. and, and um, I, I just can't thank you all enough for um, uh, doing this uh, for me. Um, and, and I hope for, for the city to help them, you know, learn kind of the ins and outs of, of being the mayor and addressing some of these challenges that we have. And uh, I just, just want to thank you. And then, and then uh, you know, finally, um, I just want to thank the people of Sioux Falls and the people in this area that, that um, have been there for me, uh, supporting me, lifting me up, cheering me on. And yeah, ultimately giving me the uh, this this dream come true for this uh, you know poor kid on the, the east side of Yankton, South Dakota, bad buck teeth, helmet head for a haircut, no money, uh, divorced parents, um, but they made a dream come true uh, for me, and and I've I've tried to serve you as best I can. Uh, it's truly been an honor. Uh, yep, I'm, I'm going to miss it. Uh, but Sioux Falls, you're going to be in good hands. You are. Uh, the form of government that we have, it works incredibly well. And I think that we've proven that uh, over, over the years. And so regardless if it's Mayor Mike is your mayor or, or whatever, we're going to be good. And uh, I can guarantee you this, uh, Mayor Mike soon to be Mike Huther, will be cheering them on and cheering on uh, the, the great city of Sioux Falls that I, that I just love. And so it's been an honor, Sioux Falls, and Reed, I know I'm not supposed to look in the camera, but if, if you don't mind, just one thing. Go ahead. I thank you. I thank you. Uh, I'm honored. I'm blessed. Uh, you've made it happen. You've supported me. And I just wish you nothing but the best in, in life's journey. Um, you know, take every day that, that God gives you and, and make the most of it. And then finally, make it a great day. God bless you.